Hello, all friends. This is Movie Man. Today, I'm going to talk about the American sci-fi movie Real Steel. Have a seat as we begin. The story is set in a time when no one is interested in boxing matches anymore. Mankind has reached a new level of shows, robot fights. This is the sport that Charlie Kenton, the main character, is involved in. Charlie is actually a former boxer, once a promising fighter, but now he's involved with robots. He puts them in different bouts, loses recklessly, gets into debt, and generally screws his life up. He has a mistress, Bailey Tyleth, the daughter of his former boxing coach. They have a rather complicated relationship, and it may even seem that the guy is using the girl for his own purposes. She lives in her father's former gym, where Charlie runs a mini workshop for his robots. One day his life changes dramatically. He is informed that his ex-wife has died, and he has to appear in court. Now he becomes the guardian of the child. But at that point, he doesn't really need him. The boy's aunt, 11-year-old Max Kentan, wants to take him for herself. Charlie realizes he can make some money off of it, so he offers to pay his aunt's rich husband to give him up. They end up agreeing that the boy will stay with his father until the end of the summer, and then Charlie will take him to his new family. The price of such a scam is $100,000, part at first and part upon the boy's return. Charlie really needs the money because he's going to buy a cool robot noisy boy, so he makes a deal and asks them to bring him to Bailey's gym. That's also where the boy is brought in. The acquaintance is a bit strained. Max thinks that his father has abandoned him and his mother, and he's generally right. The boy realizes that now the father has just sold out his son and now has to serve some time with him. Max thinks of running away altogether, but goes inside to see his father after all. There he sees Charlie and Bailey unpacking the noisy boy. The boy is a big fan of robot fights. He says he once saw one of the greatest fights this robot ever had. Among other things, the noisy boy has voice control. You tell him a command, and he immediately executes it. Charlie plans to go to the fights and leave his son to pair with Bailey for a week, but the boy blackmails his father by threatening to throw his truck keys into a ditch to go to the fight with him. The boys arrive at Crash Palace, a venue for some pretty serious fights. Charlie meets a guy named Finn, who usually takes bets on fights. He offers to put up a noisy boy for a warm-up. There you can win not the most money, but quite easily. There's also a second option, to get into a stern confrontation with a strong opponent, the prize is as much as $50,000. Max yanks Charlie and asks him to participate in a warm-up and earn some easy money, but the stubborn father objects, submitting his candidacy for the main bout. Against Noisy will be the robot Mason. At the beginning of the battle, Charlie tries to attack and does so quite successfully, but abruptly Noisy Boy begins to give up his position and soon loses his hand. This makes it hard to resist. Charlie is upset and has to drive his robot back on the cart, but apparently he is used to defeat and tries not to despair. Now, he needs a new robot. This is when a rather harsh conversation between father and son takes place. Max reproaches his father for not thinking through his actions, for he has barely studied the robot and has put it out to fight, even though voice control could be used much more extensively. At night, the guys secretly sneak into a scrap metal warehouse where they plan to find, or rather steal, some parts for a new robot. Charlie scrutinizes the various parts, and Max tries to pick something out too. Charlie warns his son that he is standing on the edge of a precipice here, and his son backs away a little. But the ground suddenly collapses and Max goes tumbling down. The weather outside is terrible. It's raining. Water is running everywhere. Max rolls down as if on a water slide but suddenly he catches on something. We see that it's a robot arm. Soon his father rushes in and pulls Max out. The boy examines the object that saved him from death. It turns out there is a whole robot hidden in the wet ground. Charlie asks his son to leave this perilous business, but Max is sure that he must get what saved him. So the boy pulls out the old machine on his own. In the morning, the guys find themselves back at Bailey's gym. There, Bailey and Charlie quarrel. The girl cannot stand to stay here an ex-lover. She can barely pay for the place and still need to maintain the warehouse robot. She accuses the man of ruining Noisy Boy and getting into more debt. Charlie promises to leave, but asks to take a last look at the robot Max found. It turns out to be a second-generation robot, but rather unusual. It wasn't designed for full-fledged fights, but was previously used for training sparring. It's pretty damn tough, but can hardly hit itself. It also has an interesting shadow function, which means it can mirror the movements of a human. Max is enthusiastic about his find and asks his father to put the robot up for some kind of duel. Of course, Charlie doesn't believe in the success of the training model, but he can't prove it to his son. 
In the morning, Bailey tells Max that Charlie was a good boxer in the past. It turns out that he once boxed with a contender for the championship belt and managed to withstand all the rounds against him, losing already in the last round. Max listens admiringly. As Charlie promised, the boys leave the gym. In the evening, they decide to stop by the place where one of the major league fights will take place, featuring the toughest robot of the time, Zeus. But Charlie comes here on business. He wants to borrow money from Finn or just ask him to help buy a new robot. Max is told not to run away and wait for his father, but the overly curious kid sneaks into the hall, where Zeus destroys another opponent in the first round. That night, Finn gives his acquaintance nothing, but tells him to go to a certain zoo for some illegal fights. Max is just begging Daddy to put a robot in the fight again. He even has a name ready. His name will be Adam. Charlie agrees to go to the fight tomorrow so that his son will finally realize how insignificant his find is. The next day, the guys arrive at the designated place with their robot. There, Max immediately bets with the local owner that his robot will make it through the first round, with 1,000 bucks at stake. Against the Atom comes a rather large and wide robot. Charlie reads his opponent's combinations from his experience and prompts Max. The robot struggles to survive the first round. The guys get an offer to double the bet if they put up another one. Charlie wants to leave because their robot is weakened, but Max accepts the challenge. And at the very beginning of the round, Adam strikes his opponent several times, causing him to glitch and lose control. Adam only has to finish his opponent off. The audience starts counting down to the knockout. Having won, Charlie asks to give them their promise right away and hurries to leave the place with his son. The winners stay at the motel. Charlie, too, is heartened by his son's victory and calls Bailey to share her joy. Max is even more enthusiastic. He spends the night digging into the robot's settings to make it better and stronger. He even installs Noisy Boy's voice control. In the morning, Charlie catches his son dancing with the robot. As soon as Max sees his father, he immediately stops. The child asks his father to train the robot, to show him techniques, and to pass on his own skills. Charlie is confused because he hasn't boxed himself in a long time, but soon he can't stand it and agrees. In return, his son promises to perform a spectacular dance before each fight. Charlie trains the robot and things are going quite well. The guys perform at small venues and destroy their opponents one by one. They talk about them on the radio and also mention the rousing dance, which has become a trademark of the couple. One day, after another fight, Adam is invited to perform in one of the league fights. Charlie's amazement is boundless, and he and his son, of course, agree. They have to fight against a Twin Cities robot with two heads and a lot of gadgets. The control system of this robot is impressive. Behind two computers, there are people who have complete control over the movement and the condition of their fighter. Before the fight, the guys are summoned by Farah Lenkov, the owner of the very Zeus who is about to become the ultimate champion. The girl offers $200,000 for their robot. She wants to use it as a sparring partner for Zeus. She tries to convince the boys that their robot won't leave here alive after the next fight. And this way, there's a chance to make money. Charlie is already shouting that he agrees, but the boy is adamantly against it. Max brings his robot out to fight. The scale of this fight is impressive. A lot of enthusiastic spectators, noise, and serious organization. Adam's control system looks very poor compared to his opponent, but he holds up well and strikes. The opponent, though, is hitting a lot harder. Charlie says to look for weaknesses in the robot, and it turns out to be the arm, because it shakes in the swing before he strikes. Aiming for it, Adam manages to knock his opponent out. He finishes him off and knocks him out. In his joy, Max snatches the microphone from the announcer and tells everyone in public that his robot was about to be bought. But worse than that, the boy challenges Zeus to a duel. Farah Lenkov and Takmashido, who usually directs the robot, look on in hatred at what is going on. When they are finished, Max and Charlie take their money and leave for the truck, where Charlie's old acquaintance Ricky, to whom he owes money, is already waiting for them. The man says he will pay back what he owes right away, but the guys of the river beat up the father in front of the child, take all the money and run away. The next morning, Charlie is taken away by his aunt's son, as they had arranged with her husband. Max looks at his father with tears in his eyes. It should be noted that they have become great friends during this time, but Charlie thinks that there, with rich guardians, Max has a better chance of a successful future, so he leaves the boy and refuses to give up the money. That night, Charms moves in with Bailey and lies down next to her, cuddling her gently. In the morning, Charlie feels lousy. Bailey insists that the man act and fight for his child. The couple kiss passionately, and after Charlie goes out to check on Max, 
There, he apologizes to his son and tries to explain why he did what he did and takes Max away from his guardians for one evening. Team Zeus has agreed to the fight, and a satisfied Max can't contain his joy because his dream is starting to come true. The guys immediately go to the place where the fight for the championship belt will take place. Team Zeus does not take his opponent seriously. Ricky, Charlie's detractor, bets that Adam will go down in the first round. By the way, an aunt and her husband and even Bailey came to support the kid. The battle is about to begin, five rounds awaiting them, but almost everyone is prepared for Zeus to win by knockout as usual. Symbolically, the battle is called Live Steel. In the first round, Zeus throws a lot of hard punches at Adam, from which he falls. The robot bravely gets up and tries to hold some sort of defense. After the third fall, even Max drops his hands, but asks his robot to get up and fight. Charlie controls him through voice commands, trying to resist and use defensive tactics. Miraculously, Adam makes it through the first round. For Ricky, who has just lost his hundred, the evil collectors are already coming. The second round, Adam is also holding his own. Of course, he gets hit in the head and body, but he stays in line. During the breaks, Max and Charlie frantically try to repair the damage. In the next rounds, the Adam almost gets disabled forever. In the last minutes, the robot's voice control breaks. Max tearfully asks his father to use the shadow to start moving and leading the robot with his movements. Charlie hardly accepts such a challenge. In the last round, Charlie manages to break through Zeus's defenses and delivers targeted blows to the head. The man runs, waving his fists and jumping around the ring to lead his already tired robot to victory. Zeus's system begins to malfunction, his charge already running low. Enraged, Takmashido sits himself down at the console and tries to counter, but Charlie is no longer stopped. He attacks powerfully and rolls Zeus to the ground. The giant falls with a rumble but rises after a couple of seconds. Zeus's strength is running out, and Adam tries to take advantage of it, but fails to do so in time. The gong sounds, which says the end of the last round. The judge says that now everything depends on the scores of the jury. Meanwhile, for Max and Charlie, it is already a victory to withstand all the rounds against such a professional. The judges still award the victory to Zeus, but even the commentator says that it is a real defeat for their team. And Adam is now called the people's champion. Team Zeus feels trampled. They've never had such a high-profile fall in their careers. After the results are announced, Charlie tries to tell his son that he loves him, but he understands. At the very end, he, Max, and Adam raise their hands victoriously to the rapturous applause of the audience. So there you have it, folks. A touching end to a spectacular and dynamic film. And that's it for me. Don't get bored. I'll be back soon with more movies. And don't forget about the likes and subscriptions. See you and hear from you.